Inequalities are very different from equations. The idea is that no longer does x have one value, but as many values as you can think of, and more. So this says x is something bigger than 7. You might notice that that could be anything. It could be 8, it could be 9, it could be 10. So x has a lot of values. How do we deal with that? Well, it's pretty common to plot this kind of an idea on a number line. So what's nice about these number lines, you don't have to set the whole number line up, just set up a couple of numbers to get your point across. So I'm going to set up 6, 7, and 8. Because this is all the numbers I need to show the idea that I want to show, which is any number bigger than 7. That's what this means. So our first step here is to put an open circle on 7. The open circle means that 7 is not part of the answer. Think about it. 7 is not bigger than 7, so that can't work. Next, we draw an arrow in the direction that we need to go. We're going here to the right because we want to show every number that's bigger than 7. And this direction to the right is bigger than 7. So this is a plot of this inequality. Again, I'll write that down. These are inequalities. Let's look at our next example. This is saying the opposite. Every number, x, less than 7. So this will look very similar. And this time, I'm just going to draw 6, 7, 8. Put an open circle on 7, because 7 is not not less than 7. And then draw an arrow that goes to the right. The idea being every number in this direction is less than 7. So here, in this example, it's very similar to this one. Except now, x, it's bigger than 7, or it could be equal to it. That's what this little line down here means. And again, I really only need to draw a couple of numbers on our number line, 6, 7, 8. How do we graph, the, uh, how is this graph different from this one? Well, instead of an open circle, we're going to fill it in. That tells us that 7 could be your answer. And then we're going to draw an arrow this way, because every number bigger than 7. Very similar idea over here. This time we're saying every number less than or equal to 7. It's very similar to this, except now 7 could be the answer. It could be a value we want. So we draw a closed circle, a filled in circle at 7, instead of an open one. That tells us that 7 could be one of the values we need. And draw an arrow to the left. Sometimes we have to solve for an equation. It won't just tell us the answer. And it might look something like this. Fortunately, everything we do follows the same step steps we'd use to solve in an equation. So now we have 2x, fix that, 2, 2x is greater than 6. Well, 2 times something is greater than 6, so what is that, that something has to be 3. To find that, we can divide both sides by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1, 6 divided by 2 is 3, so really, this is like saying x is anything bigger than 3. And that makes sense, I mean, if x was 3, it would be 2 times 3, and 6 is not bigger than 6, so whatever number we put in here, it has to be bigger than 3. So look, we know x has to be bigger than 3, let's plot it. Just use 1, 2, and 3. This means x bigger than 3, so open circle on 3, because 3 can't be the answer. And then arrow to the right. So this tells me any number bigger than 3 would fit in this equation. Next we have this one over here. Combine like terms. 2x plus 3x is 5x, and 5x is less than 15. So x has to be 3 because 5 times 3 x is to be less than 3, excuse me, because 5 times 3 is 15. What do I mean? Well, divide both sides by 5. 5 divided by 5 is 1, so it's just x is less than 3. So in other words, anything less than 3 would fit in this sentence, because this is a longer version of just saying 5 times x is less than 15. So if x was 3, it wouldn't work. It would be equal on both sides. But we want something less than 3. So we plot our answers, we plot our values. x less than 3. 
open circle on three, and then an arrow going to the left. Here, notice the difference is that the variables are on both sides. Let's make some room. So when the variables are both sides, it's pretty general to say that we want to get both variables on the same side of the equation. How do we do that? Well, there are many options, but I want to get, I'm going to choose to get this 10x over here. So I have to get rid of it. Take it away. Oops, fix that. I want to take it away. Think of take away or subtraction. So minus 10x. 10x minus 10x will get rid of it. That's just 0. I have to do it on this side too because just like an equation, an inequality needs to remain balanced. 15x's minus 10x's <coughs> is 5x. Carry our inequality down. So 5x is less than or equal to 0 plus 10. Simplify it. We don't need that 0. 5x is less than or equal to 10. So I want to get x by itself just like in an equation. Divided by 5 on both sides, that gets rid of this 5. 5 divided by 5 is 1. And 10 divided by 5 is 2. So this is a long way of saying x has to be less than or equal to 2. And we can draw that. If we have 1, 2, and 3, we put a closed circle on 2. Remember, because this means x less than or equal to 2. And we go to the left because we're dealing with less than. And that's our answer.